According to Jain tradition, there have been 24 Tathagatas, known as all-knowing teachers who have built a pathway from the cycle of suffering, samsara, to an eternal realm of liberation, moksha. The last Tathagata is the most famous and is regarded by some as the founder of the Jain religion. His name was Mahavira, meaning great hero, and he lived from 599 to 527 BCE. The Western scholars place his birth and death within the 5th century proper. There is much uncertainty surrounding his life and work, and it's difficult to know for certain which details are historically accurate and which are merely the result of hagiography accredited over time. His story, nevertheless, is a fascinating one and says much about his influence. According to Jain legend, Mahavira first occupied the womb of a pious Brahmin named Devanada. Because she had wondrous dreams, she and her husband knew that this was a special child. However, in a strange twist of fate, orchestrated by the god Indra, Mahavira was switched over to another woman named Trisala, who was the queen of the Kshatriya caste. Interestingly, her original child, a baby girl, was switched over to Divanada. So sweet was this baby Mahavira in the womb that he didn't move so as not to cause injury or pain to his birth mother, but this caused some fear in her because he was so still. When Mahavira was born, the universe rejoiced and he was honored by gods, goddesses, and angelic beings. Indra struck a divine bell so all can worship this radiant child. Indra was so pleased by the appearance of Mahavira that he lifted the child upwards to heaven so he could be righteously honored. While in heaven, there was a festival where he was bathed and adorned. When Mahavira returns back to the earthly kingdom of his father, everybody rejoices because everybody experiences great wealth and fortune. Because of this, they named him Vardhanama, which means prosperous. As a young boy, Mahavira was playing a game of tag with his childhood companions when a large cobra tried to attack, but Mahavira flung the hissing snake away from the boys and away from harm. Another demon disguised as a little boy tried to deceive Mahavira while playing leapfrog, growing super tall in order to attack him. But Mahavira made him shrink down by blows until the demon begged for mercy. This is how Vardhamana became known as the great hero Mahavira. When Mahavira was a young boy of 8 years old studying at school, Ender took on the teacher's form to show everyone that Mahavira was himself the great rishi. Mahavira grew up as a young handsome man, but he refused to participate in hunting since he believed that we should all treat others as we wish to be treated ourselves. Mahavira honored his parents' wishes and got married to Yashoda and had one daughter named Priya Darshana. After his parents died at 28 years old, Mahavira sought to renounce the world and to seek enlightenment. To do such, he asked permission from his brother Nartavadara. Mahavira explained to his family and kingdom that he must follow a higher destiny than merely storing worldly riches. As Mahavira got ready to renounce his kingdom and prepare for renunciation, he opened up the palace doors and gave everything away. After his sacred bath, Mahavira was carried out on a beautiful carriage in a parade through the town. In front of the Ashoka tree, Mahavira takes off all his jewels and pulls out of his hair in five fistfuls. Indra then appears and provided him with a beautiful white shawl to cover his naked body. Mahavira and his radiance was attractive to all, as he gave off an enchanting aroma of sandalwood paste. In the beginning of Mahavira's journey, a poor Brahmin asked for a gift from him and Mahavira offered him a part of his beautiful white cloth that was bestowed on him by Indra, but the other part ripped on a thorny branch and was too taken by the Brahmin. Mahavira was now completely naked. When Mahavira was asked to watch a farmer's bulls, Mahavira was in deep meditation and unaware of the request, only to be beaten by the disgruntled man. The cows returned peacefully and Indra appeared to Mahavira to protect him, and the farmer repented. As he meditated in a temple, evil spirits tried to torture him, but eventually realized their wrong ways and left him undisturbed. Mahavira came upon a cobra that bit his foot, but Mahavira reminded him of his past life, that he used to be an ascetic, and thus he liberated him from his bad karma. On a ferry crossing rough seas created by an evil spirit, while everyone panicked, Mahavira remained calm. Other demons also tried to assail him, including his wife from a previous life who was envious of him. When Mahavira was on a 5-month fast, he had very strict restrictions about how he could break it, and a young woman met the conditions and offered him a basket of beans. Mahavira met a severe test 
when a deranged farmer put sharpened poppas grass and shoved them into each ear hole. The next day a physician saw Mahavira in this miserable condition and the poppas grass was removed. For 12 and a half years Mahavira practiced severe austerities and because of this practice he eradicated all of his past karmas and a brilliant white aura surrounded him from then on. With complete knowledge Mahavira became a Jina, one who has conquered the onslaught of samsara. In celebration of his Jina status, the gods planted an Ashoka tree, which grew in full size immediately. And this is where Mahavira taught the community his message of nonviolence. Eleven philosophers renowned for their erudition tried to challenge Mahavira, but were unsuccessful. The leader of the group, Gotama, became one of his greatest disciples. After 24 years of teaching, Mahavira was confronted by an old disciple, Gosalaka, who had gained supernatural powers and had tried to use evil curses on him, but it backfired and he died instead. At 72 years old, Mahavira gave his last sermon for two days and two nights and reaffirmed the five principles of Jainism, nonviolence, truth, non-theft, self-control, and detachment from worldly possessions. As Mahavira was on his deathbed, he reminded them that his spirit was immortal and that there was no reason to be sad. He died in the year 527 BCE. Gotama cried at the death of his master Mahavira, but remembered that he should not be attached to the body of his beloved teacher, and immediately became enlightened himself and continued the teachings of Mahavira.